Hi guys, so as you know I have a new job and I'm moving down to London. If you don't know I'll link the video that explains all of that down below but I will only be taking sort of five to ten physical books with me on my initial journey down to London. So my new best friend on this adventure is my Kindle and I thought it might be fun to show you what is on my Kindle. So a bit of a TBR, a bit of a Kindle tour, that kind of thing. I should probably say that this video isn't sponsored by Amazon or Kindle or anybody. This is actually a second hand, second generation Kindle that used to be my granny's but it works perfectly fine and uh, does exactly what I need it to do, which is store books. Some of the books on this I've paid for myself, some are books I've downloaded from NetGalley, which is a website you can go to request ebooks to review. Uh, if you're not aware of that, I'll link it down below. And then there's some free PDFs of like public domain books as well that I have on here. Uh, again, I'll link links to those down below if you're interested, but without further ado, Let's get into the books. So the first book I have on my Kindle is The Last Days of Leda Grey by Essie Fox. It's about a young journalist in the 1970s who finds an old photograph of a famous actress, Leda Grey, and he seeks her out to learn more about her past. I've read Essie Fox's Elijah's Mermaid in the past and really enjoyed it, so I'm really looking forward to this one as well. I then have The Couple Next Door by Shari La Pena. I've heard a few people talking about this one. It's a thriller story about a couple who are having dinner at their neighbour's house when their baby goes missing. So it sounds very intriguing. I then have Nina Is Not Okay by Shappi Corsandi. Now this is a young adult book I believe but I don't know much else about it. I do however adore Shappi Corsandi. She is a comedian and I've seen her live a number of times. I just think she's fabulous and I just really wanted to read her book. I think Claire from Book Fox has a review of the book though. If you want to know a little bit more about it, I'll link it down below. I have apparently Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare, which is a play by William Shakespeare that I don't even remember downloading, so don't know when I'll get to that. <laughs> I then have A Cold Legacy by Megan Shepherd, which I pre-ordered. I think it's the third in Megan Shepherd's trilogy, which began with The Madman's Daughter. I read the first two in the series. And the second one was such a big disappointment after having really enjoyed the first one that I just never bothered to read the third one. But maybe I will. Maybe one day I'll just really crave to read it and I will. A book I'm a little more excited for is a double barreled detective story by Mark Twain. And this is a parody Sherlock Holmes novel written by Mark Twain. What more need I say? We then have The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling. This has been on my Kindle for ages. I think it was a pound in a Kindle sale once and I've just never gotten around to reading it. But I do actually hear really good things about J.K. Rowling's mystery series that begin with The Cuckoo's Calling. So I do want to get to it eventually and I have it so presumably I will. Another one I've had for ages is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Again I think he got it for like 99p in a Kindle sale. I have heard so many things about Brandon Sanderson, good and bad on booktube. He is you know, just a booktube author. He's an author I associate with booktube and I do love high fantasy so I do hope to give him a shot one of these days. Some public domain books I've downloaded include The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, Venus in Furs by Leopold von Sacher Mazok. That just did not sound right. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell which I've seen the BBC miniseries of and adored so do really want to read the book. And Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen which I am really hoping to get to soon. Then a book I have actually started on my Kindle is Harpy's Flight by Megan Lindholm which is the alias under which Robin Hobb used to write under. Actually I have no idea which one of those is her real name but um, that's the old one. And uh, Harpy's Flight is obviously one of Robin Hobb's very early novels. It is a fantasy novel still. I have to say from the maybe like 20% I've read though it really doesn't live up to the writing she's done under the name Robin Hobb. But I would still like to finish it and have read some of her earlier stuff and kind of see how she's grown. So I do intend to do that. It's not terrible, it's just not as good. Generally speaking, once I've read a book, I take it off my Kindle just so it's not taking up space. So um, that's why all of these I haven't read or haven't finished. I then have The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. We've all heard the name Sarah Waters. I've still never read her, which I am appalled by, but she just gets rave reviews. 
so I do really hope to get to her very soon. This one I got off Net Galleys. I then have One by Sarah Crossan, which is a young adult novel told entirely in verse and it's about two conjoined twins. I actually own a physical copy of this but I also downloaded the ebook off of NetGalley just um, for convenience and I'm because I really do want to read it. We then have Sultana's Dream by Rokea Shekhawat Hossein but this cost me like 99p. I then have a prose translation of Ovid's Metamorphosis which is an ancient Roman epic poem and Ovid essentially just collects together all the myths that involve metamorphosis together like Medusa, Daphne, Leda, all of those kind of myths um, and strings them together which I've still never read all the way through but I got it so <laughs> I then think the next batch of novels are all from a humble bundle I bought which is a website where you can buy like bundles of games or ebooks or e-comic books together and kind of pay whatever price you want to but if you pay over a certain amount of price you'll get a few more really cheap and sometimes some really good stuff on it so an independent publishing house called Small Bear Press were having a sale on it of a bundle of their books so I bought the bundle I think it was literally like eight dollars and I got like eight books or something like that so those are all of what these are I'm not actually sure what all of them are about though so those are The Liminal People, The Monkey's Wedding and Other Stories Meet Me in the Moon Room, Stranger Things Happen, which is actually by Kelly Link, who I have heard of and have another one of her books on my shelves, and Fire Logic, Tyrannia and Other Renditions, Generation Lost. I think those are all the ones I got in the bundle. I'll link them all down below so you can read the actual synopsises. I, I just, because I bought them in a bundle, I didn't buy them necessarily because of what they were all specifically about. I just like the publisher and some of them sounded interesting. But moving swiftly onwards, I have Dreams of Distant Shores by Patricia A. McKillop and this is a collection of short stories by Patricia A. McKillop who is quite the prolific fantasy author. But yeah, this one was on NetGalley and I'd been wanting to try some of her work so I figured, hey, why not some short stories? I then have Summer Long by Peter S. Beagle who you may recognise as the author of The Last Unicorn. So again, quite a famous fantasy author. So hopefully a good one is all I can say. I then have The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe which I've read about 30-40% of it. It's a really long book and I was buddy reading it with Alicia and Tanya whose channels I'll link down below but never got to the end obviously and never even got to the middle. It's really enjoyable when you're reading it but nothing ever really compelled me to go back to it and it was just quite slow. I would like to pick it back up because I certainly wasn't not enjoying it and I'd love to know what happens to the characters. It's a gothic novel, it's one of the novels referenced a lot in Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey um, so I would really like to finish it. I then have Arcadia by Ian Piers which I did buy myself and I'm actually kind of actively reading. I actually have a physical copy here so I'll show you that but basically this is just too bulky. I couldn't take it anywhere with me. I have um, some problems in my wrists and these parts of my hands um, just like repetitive strain injury and this is just not a comfortable book to read when you're trying to rest your hands and your wrists. <laughs> it's just basically like no it was a mistake this this thing I can't read it so I decided because I was really enjoying it I wanted to read it on the go wanted to be able to read it easily without it being too much weight to buy it on my Kindle and I'm glad I made that decision and I am really enjoying it. We then have Rise of the Dragons by Morgan Rice which I don't know much about but somebody recommended it on my Books About Dragons video and I went on Amazon and it turned out it was free on the Kindle so I downloaded it because why not? I love dragons and I may as well give it a shot if it's free and given that somebody actually recommended it to me I'm presuming it's at least got something positive to offer. And then is a book I don't need to say much about and that's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling. Yes, I bought this on my Kindle and a physical copy and I've still not read it. I, I know, I bought it at midnight on my Kindle because I really wanted to read it. I got 20% of the way through before I decided to go to sleep and then by the time the next day came around and the hype had kind of overwhelmed the internet, I just didn't want to read it anymore. So we'll hopefully get into the right headspace to read it further down the line. Next is The Regulars by Georgia Clark, which I also got off NetGalley and this is a novel about three girls who are just average girls living average lives until they come across a magical tincture which makes them, you know, phenomenally beautiful and it changes their life. Uh, it sounds kind of disturbing. I then have Dead Man's Blues by Ray Celestine, which is a murder mystery, I believe 
also from NetGalley. I then have The Three Guineas by Virginia Woolf, which is another one of her essays, um, and this one is about class in general, I believe. I have Are Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis, which is non-fiction. If you've heard me talk in any video recently, you'll know how much I am now in love with Angela Davis, so I'm really intrigued to read more about prison abolition. I think it's going to be really fascinating because I feel like I've got a little introduction to it in our other book. We then have Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks, which, I mean, who doesn't love that title? I think this is considered quite an important book in feminist non-fiction. Um, it deals a lot with intersectionality and just what the title implies. It sounds really positive and inspiring, so I'm really looking forward to that one. I also have Trash Sex Magic by Jennifer Stevenson, which is another one from that small bear press bundle. Another Angela Davis, which is Women, Race and Class. Fantastic title, fantastic topic, <laughs> really looking forward to that one. I also have Eileen, which is a literary crime novel about women in the 1960s working in a boys' prison and then crime happens. That's all I know at the moment, but it's got some really interesting reviews and really intrigued to get to this one soon. And from a Man Booker long-listed book to a not the Booker shortlisted book, I also have The Summer That Melted Everything, which essentially is about women that becomes friends with the devil. And the last two include I Am Your Sister by Audre Lorde, who is an important player in the radical black feminist movement and a poet, and this is a collection of her non-fiction writings, and Gender Trouble by Judith Butler, who is another really important feminist thinker, and, and this book is all about how gender is an improvised performance, um, essentially the gender construct theory and um, breaking down how we act out gender in our daily lives. Um, yeah. Those are all the books that I have on my Kindle that I haven't read or haven't finished and essentially the selection of books I will be picking from in the near future. But if you have any thoughts on any of the books I mentioned in this video, please do let me know. It might give me a better idea of what to start with. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!